second. Oh, we can't use it. Whoa, who is these? I was happy. What's up? I would put on camera what I'm seeing right now, but you guys know that I like to help you remain incognito. Hold on. Let me move the camera a little bit. I'm at flip flop right now, chilling out. Thought I would come on a live to air. Actually, maybe right there is not the best place. Hold on. You want to come on for a second? How you doing? How's it going, everybody? How's it going? Sharison, <laughs> what's your name? TJ, TJ the Guru. But Sharison got me out here, got me situated, guys. Everything's beautiful, man. I've been having a wonderful time. Definitely on the beach. It's amazing. The weather's good, but I can't say one thing. It's hot. This is the first time I ever sweated. You're, you're not. Doesn't look like you're sweating. You look pristine. It, it'll, it'll, Depends if I take the cap off. <laughs> then plus I need to get cleaned up, you know. So. And you're also an expat now. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Full time with it. Expat in La Casa. Actually, I'm gonna go back over in that other chair. There's a lot of sun here. Do you want to say something about your life here? Just I came on a few visits. Take that for a second. I just came on a few visits, you guys. It was fun, you know. I enjoyed myself. Sri showed me around a little bit. I had a couple of drinks with her and Ken yeah. and then you know after that you know the people you know the people are really good here I mean you have some bad apples but not too many everybody really you know there to really try to help each other out if they can but you just gotta stay with the energy of the people that's mean you well but other than that I've been enjoying myself I have a question for you mm -hmm. so right now the topic of the video so I was sitting here with a couple of guys oh. right and a couple of one guy shouts out Jack and Jack said to me hold on let me turn this on do not disturb Jack said to me that one thing he loves about the Dominican Republic is that it's different than New York now I know you're from Atlanta now, he said it's different from New York. He said when he walks along these streets, brothers are saying hello to him like they are old brothers from back in the day, like brother from a different mother. But he said in New York, they walk by each other and they don't know each other. What's your take on that? New York. You gotta, yeah, but you got to understand Atlanta, you know, it's a built up city for us, but we're not congested as they are. People got business that, that, you know, they got work to do. They work be like miles down. That's why you see during the New Year's Eve, everybody can't be in Times Square at the same time to see the ball drop because, you know, people come there days in advance and stay stay up under that cold weather just so they can be in the in the middle of Times Square when the ball drops and everything. Really? Yeah, of course. Okay. What's Atlanta like? Atlanta is congested as far as traffic when people get off work. But you can move around easy. It's different you counties. It's easy. The brothers going down the street. Another one is, do you guys pass uh, each other or do you say hi? I mean, you acknowledge, you say, hey, you, you give a head nod, what's up, you know, or keep it moving. But it's not really no, no say so that you got to say hi to somebody. You know, you just you just move accordingly. And if you by yourself, you might just, you see two other brothers walking your way, you know, you just make sure everything's cool from the get go. You'd be like, hey, what's up? And they'd be like, what's good, bro? And keep going. Now, what about here? Here, everybody, you know, try to speak, but then you got the ones that speak and then talk your head off. But <laughs> other than that, it's all right. People, people, they friendly here. So y'all don't have to worry about the people here not being friendly or whatever. So right. you'll definitely enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you. That's a really interesting take on it because I've heard three times in the last week. I, I, all the guys were from New York and they all said the same thing. They're like, you know what? The brotherhood, the brotherhood here is amazing. Everyone's like, hey, brother, hey, brother. How long you been here for? How long you staying from? Where are you from? And everyone is talkative. Yeah, you got to watch it, though. Some of them, they'll talk to you, but hey, they're like, hey, they need some work, too, though. You know, <laughs> but um, besides that, though, serious, all seriousness, though, it's a great place. People try to show you love. You know, these guys are here to like you know make money and you know gain commission because they're different in the states you know we got salary we 
we got commission too, and then we got Ireland. So these guys just based off commission, it's like survival every day for them. So right. anything you can do, whether it's two dollars to help these people, it go a long way. So they're happy to see you when you arrive. You know, they take, they don't take your arrival for granted. So you know, don't come here like how we got in the states where you got the beggars that just beg. You know, they can do something for real. But these, some of these people ain't really have the choice because a lot of people come from Haiti and places where you know they just really ain't got no financial support. But two dollars go a long way to feed about four to five people at mo you know at Matt's out here so I mean I appreciate all the people who show love who's been here already and those to come you know I mean it, it gets annoying but hey you know you just got to look at it that way and just keep it moving you can't help everybody but you know the few you do help it goes a long way mm, thank you. definitely that's so sweet now what about Americans and Americans here uh, what oh. do you think about because Americans they find um joy in that whole brotherhood here and everything what do you think about it have you met a lot of americans of course of course they are here to you know they get their business jump started you know it's cheaper to actually start up some business here and everything and you can make money actually because it's all commissioners or whatever but you can make a lot of money here off the uh, business of expats american coming out here but the issue is you know you do run into a competition at times so you bump hairs here and there but these brothers seem to tend to stick together a little bit on a lot of things but mm. so, you know there's always that clash and then also you got to understand being here so long those brothers are getting you know adjusted and they're being con commenced into that mindset of the Dominican hustle like hey we got to get it I got to get it you know they got it they got to get all the money you know but it's enough for everybody to eat you just got to get out of that mindset and not talk each other down but to build each other up and that's why a lot of these guys get network starters because they realize like hey we all can win together and you know they just try to educate other guys to come out here and do the same thing i like that building each other up yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> why burn bridges when you all can eat? right now i have a couple of more questions for you your first time here was when uh my first time was actually april 14th of 2020? 2021. 2021? Yep. This is TJ Guru, guys, by the way. Um, so you just... That, Boom. Exactly. Well, how like, did you I, come here? I mean, I always wanted to uh, move outside, move abroad, you know, whether it was in uh, Japan, Korea, you know, and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, I definitely wanted to uh, get abroad and uh, check out a few things, live abroad because, it's, you know, it's cheaper and you can make business moves. <laughs> I mean, I made some in the States as well, but just coming over here and making business move goes a long way. Even uh, like Colombia, you know, it's cheaper than even here. Costa Rica a little bit on the higher side, but I mean, if you like to travel, you like to get a different culture. The foods here is very good, organic and stuff. You ain't got to worry about dealing with all the, you know, chemicals and stuff in your food. And life is good. I mean, the weather is, it's, it's like one, one season here besides when it rains, like summer long. So who wouldn't want that? You know? so, so wait, when I met you, when you first came, you met Ken and me in, yep. in April and we were chilling yep. on the beach. We had so a good time. we did, but that was your first trip here and now you're living here. Yep. That was the first one. And uh, I took a couple of more after that to get a yeah. feel, because you know you can't be sure after the first time. Two but, times you came back yeah. after that. Three. 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 Okay. So like the uh, first time, guys, it's just really there for you to you know meet some of these um, expats here and build a relationship, so that you know you're not walking around here again, you know, taking advantage of. But you got to be able to just come out here and just actually enjoy it and see that you like it. And then the second and third time, you can just assess the situation as far as making a business move and actually living here after that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you did. Like, wow, you're living here now in a nice penthouse, three bedroom apartment in Sosua on the near the main road. Nice, nice how are you? How are you liking your new life? I mean, it's good. You know, it's paradise. You wake up, you know, you got the nice trees, palm trees around you and everything. The sun's bright, the sun's good. And then, you you know, you're just getting up, having your having your little coffee or whatever you got, you know, you just have your little orange juice or whatever. It don't matter what it is, pina colada or whatever. You just know, like, hey, once I get up, there's ample amount of breakfast places like Flip Flop, 
Bailey, there's a lot of good restaurants here to just go to have your breakfast. And then, you know, so on, you got the beach right there already popping off. So you like, man, That's every, right. it's like, it's like being in Atlanta. Like Atlanta is pretty much a, I call it a black Hollywood. So, really? But uh, yeah, absolutely. But it, but it has more of a technical hub as well that is built out on. But the biggest part about that is that, you know, it's a city that never sleeps, and it's pretty much how it is here. It, it never sleeps. I thought New York was a city that never sleeps. <laughs> what I mean by that, people people get the misconception on it. When it's a city that never sleeps, it's like pretty this morning. In Atlanta, you got like Mondays, you got seafood. Tuesdays, you got Taco Tuesday, of course. Wednesdays, you got karaoke night. Thursday, you got ladies' night. Then Friday and Saturday is pretty much the weekend. Then Sunday is, you know, the brunch. So then when you go back to Monday, it all starts over again. What are you doing here? It's, you got to look at it as an investment. Come here to invest. It's cheaper to live here so you can save a lot more money and continue, you know, running your assets from the states and you can retire early. I mean, if you're here to just spend all your money, I mean, that's on you. But it's cheaper to live here if you just tend to live like an actual Dominican, you can save a lot of money and just continue to invest even in the Dominican population because with all the new uh, renovations and stuff to come, you know, the price is going to go up here and you're going to capitalize on your investment. So, I mean, that's how I look at it. I mean, if you come for any other reason, hey, don't do vacation out here, I'm telling you. You do vacation out here, they're going to run your pockets. Easy. Okay. Oh, thank you. And is there anything that you want to do here that you want to plug right now for everyone um, or anything at all you want to say? Any suggestions? Because TJ, I, I call you TJ, guru. <laughs> but I just want to say, like, you're doing what a lot of my viewers and a lot of my clients want to do. What, what, how did you find the Dominican Republic? How did you find even me? How did you find everything going on here? Oh. Research your research, people. I'm telling you, you're gonna find it. But you got, I have a lot of older friends, you know. These guys, they travel a lot, so these guys brought to my knowledge. They're like, hey, you ought to go see the Dominican Republic a lot. They got a nice place, and you can actually save a lot of money going over there and living over there. They even said the same thing about Colombia, but you know, Colombia a little bit more on the dangerous side. They got to really uh, fix that issue there before a lot of expats tend to go there but i mean there's some over there they're still doing good but you know it's a little bit more dangerous than the dominican public itself but if you come you know to what is costa rica jamaica it ain't just got to be here i mean you want to kind of build a relationship before you get there so you know what to expect you know like you want to kind of check on some of these expats videos look up where you want to invest your money you don't want to get out there and then you know somebody take advantage of you and then you don't work so hard all your life and don't save and thought you was going to be investing in something and then you come away with nothing. Right. What do you invest in? Ooh, I oughta, you know, I want to keep that a secret right now because, you know, I want to be the first. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm definitely looking at space right now for something, for something big. And I'm bringing some of my stateside mindset and some of the places I've actually seen that this country don't have to offer to her, you know. So just consider it's like, you know, something where I'm not I'm not saying this particular this, but it's gonna be a you know a blown idea where you're looking at people as far as a job where there's no commission, but instead you can make commission or hourly little wage or salary at most, you know. So that'll be something different here. But that's just an idea I'm throwing out there, but at the same time looking for a building to do something. So if I put it out there now, then I'm screwed, right? Like in or a building in Cabarete? Oh, it don't matter. It, it don't matter. It could be Cabarete or whatever, but it'll definitely want to be closer to, you know, the tourism because, exactly, because you're bringing more of an American style that they don't have here that they would still enjoy. I mean, you're in the Dominican Republic to enjoy the Dominican Republic, but at the same time, it'd be good to, you know, still have that kind of home, homey Dominican style. You know? Interesting. So, when are you going back to America? Oh, uh, whenever. I guess that's whenever for me to sign, right? Okay. You have <laughs> but, no plans to go back to America? Yeah, right yeah, of course. You know, I mean, I got family there, so I got to go back and check on them, and I got business there. I got to go take care of that. But it's just a back and forth relationship, so it's nothing to miss on both sides, you know? So, it's just here and there.
Oh, they don't got the food there. Uh, hey. They don't. Ha they got my food ready, guys. Okay. But it was definitely a pleasure to speak with Sharice, man. She's a wonderful lady. And she'll never spoil you wrong. But definitely, guys, definitely get out here and check it out. You know, you know, check on your investment before you invest. And also, you know, try to enjoy the place. At least like the place you're investing in. Because you, if you don't like it, then how you think, you know, somebody else going to feel about your idea here? Right. Oh, well, thank you so much. That was really a nice surprise. Thank you. All right, honey. Now the sun is coming in here a little bit more. Let me try to move back over there again. Hold on. I think. Hold on, guys. I don't know. Sorry. Hey, how you doing? I think we'll be okay right here. The sun is beautiful. I love it, but I don't I don't do a lot of tanning just because, you know, it's not always the healthiest thing to do. So you won't see me on the beach very often, ladies and gentlemen. So right now what you're looking at is the main road that goes from Pedro Clasante. See where that motorcycle is right there? Coming? Well, that street this street right here goes all the way down to the beach. See where that car up there is turning? That's where Pedro Clasante starts. Pedro Clasante is one of the main roads in Sosua, Albate. A lot of your apartments will be on there if you guys are coming to stay in an Airbnb here. And it is a great place to stay. I don't, I don't rent out a lot of places on Pedro Clasante per se, unless it is um, Europa. Hold on, I'm just looking for my glasses because I'm seeing you, a couple of you guys are messaging me and I want to make sure that I actually get to see what you guys are saying here. Um, so yeah, you know, it's really nice to see someone. Like I just got an apartment for him the other day. And it's really nice to see someone come here and change their life the way TJ has. You know, there's a lot of people that come here and they can't adjust right away. I'm going to get into a story about that right now. Hold on. I'm just going to wipe my glasses. You guys keep looking at the view for a second. I'm going to let you guys keep looking at the view as I'm checking these messages. All right. Hold on one second. Virgil, what it do? 100%. Hey, David Rich. Sending hugs and kisses to you too, sweetheart. A brothel victory. Dominican Republic is a fat man's paradise. Well, probably a skinny man's and uh, anyone else that wants to come here and save money. Um, I don't know. You mean fat in the pocket? Let's see. Virgil says Atlanta is lit. I didn't know all that. Just now I found out. Black boy says that's so true. Everyone is so friendly there no matter where they are from. Very true. Ali C. Hi. So glad to see you live. Ah, thank you so much. Ricardo Perez. What hotel you recommend for 10 days breakfast included? Let me get to that in a second. Katie Mack. Hola, hola. Nice to see you again. Thank you, Katie Mack. And then we have Bawani Sharma. I am follow last two years. Thank you for following the last two years. Guys, I got to tell you, this is a surprise video because I was sitting here in flip flops and I was like talking to Jack, shouts out Jack. Hold on, this camera's kind of close. I was um, just chilling and you know, I was like, a, a shouts out to Cardi as well and Malik and Carrie. And um, so I was talking to these gentlemen and, you know, they all were, they were telling me the same thing here. Well, Carrie was saying kind of the same thing that TJ Guru just said. 
that, you know, when you're here, it's the same thing. You say hi to everyone, and, and that's pretty much in Texas. But um, New York, I have heard in, like, the last, the last week from three different conversations that in New York, you know, the brothers are a little different than what they are here. And here, they really do. They, they're like, hey, what's up? You know, a- along the street you're going to meet a lot of friends. Like, for instance, Jack and Cardi, they were at the airport. And Cardi went up to Jack and said, hey, if you're with JetBlue, you might want to stand in this lineup over here because you're going to get through quicker. And Jack was like, all right. Jack went into the other lineup. He got through quicker and everything. And then they got here to Sosua. And I'm not, I don't remember correctly, but I think they're in the same hotel or something like that. They've been best friends ever since. Like, you know, it's amazing. One is leaving on Wednesday. The other one's leaving on Saturday. So it's amazing. And I have to say, it is amazing for me, too, when I see you guys all come together. I'm going to move my seat again just because it seems like it's going to be less sun over there. No. <laughs> More. <laughs> All right. How about right here? Oh, this is wonderful. I think this is good. Hold on. Yeah, I think this is a little bit better. The sun is very vibrant here. Wonderfully vibrant. And yes, there is a uh, paid promotion on this video. Paid promotion is brought to you by me. Hair stuff. I don't know what the name of my hair stuff should be, but I'm coming up with it. And look at my hair is getting longer for those of you who've been on this journey with me since I cut my hair off. And look how curly it is from the root all the way to the tip. If you guys look at my pictures or my videos from like, hola, if you guys look at hola, if you guys look at my other videos when I first got here my bottoms were kind of straight and not really taken care of that had nothing to do with um, here or anywhere else it had to do with maintenance and lack of wonderful hair product but now I have wonderful hair product and I made it from the beautiful health let me see finally got Hold on, I'm going to turn the camera around just because when I'm reading the messages, you guys don't need to be looking at me if I can turn the camera around and show you what's going on out there. Because there's always someone coming up and down that roadway. Let me see. Genevieve says, eyebrows are looking good. Thank you, Genevieve. Oh, I love them. I'm going to go for the top up um, in three weeks. And Ron Rain Music said, finally got a chance to catch a live. I really enjoy the apartment tours. Thank you. Would like to see more in Cabarete and Porta Plata. Planning to get myself down there soon. Love from Toronto. Oh, Ron Rain Music. T.O. in La Casa. Oh, I love, love, love Canada. I did not run from Canada. I only left because I felt like, you know, it's just a little bit more um, quality of life here. You know, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits. Um, you know, the sun is shining. Just a lot of vitamins. And everything is just, it just seems like a better quality of life here. 100%. So, shouts back to Toronto. Toronto! For those of you who don't know, I'm from Toronto. Born and raised downtown Toronto. St. Michael's Hospital. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, so, you know, moving here, that's another thing. I, I, I get apartments for a lot of you guys coming here. Some of you guys are coming for a day. I don't get apartments for a day, but most of you guys are coming and you guys are moving here now. And that is my type of client, someone that's looking for long-term, long-term, long-term rentals. And um, I have to say, is that? Oh, no, I don't know him. Oh, uh, so I have to say, um, if you're looking for a long-term rental, I got your back. Uh, but you have to be 
a little open minded. I experienced a couple of nightmares when it came to renters. And I'm going to talk about the most recent one. And then I'm going to talk about one that happened um, like way back in January, I think it was. I was going to tell you guys about it, but I thought, nah, I'm not going to because it just didn't really seem like something I wanted to talk about. You know, there's a lot of negativity that does go on behind the scenes and it's not enough to be able, it's not enough to talk about what is going on with this lump right here. You know what? I just need to make this side just even to it. <laughs> Some of you are saying, just leave it alone and go on with your story. I will. So, all right. So, um, the story that happened, a gentleman, nice enough gentleman, contacted me uh, about three weeks ago, maybe four, about a month ago. I'm not quite sure when. And he told me that he wanted an apartment. And he took one of the apartments for long term, 450 Now... I videoed that apartment and I can say from my heart, everything from my heart, that the landlord is a beautiful, honest, a goodness, Christian, Dominican woman. <laughs> Dominican woman. And she's the type of woman that would have your back. And she's also the type of woman that if you are so miserable, like she would rather you move and just go somewhere else and live there, right? And so I wanted to see her benefit. She's an, an, a Dominican woman. She has a call model on my street in front of my apartment. Never, ever, ever has she ever like strike me as somebody who is deceitful at all. So when she told me that she has an apartment for rent, I was like, I got you. And I went and I videoed it and I put it up. And so many of you guys, I put it up like a month ago, I guess, maybe three weeks ago. And so many of you guys contacted me for that apartment. And I was so proud to offer it to you because I know other people here would, would have raised that price up like to at least 600. It's a two bedroom, two bathroom. It doesn't have air conditioning, but it does have fans. And if you're there long term, you would just get your own air conditioning put in, right? Really doesn't cost that much here. Doesn't have a pool on the grounds either. If it did have a pool on the grounds, it probably would have been 800 a month for a two bedroom, two bathroom, two bedroom, two bathroom. It's very important to note because the main bath, the main bedroom has its own bathroom. And for that amount of money every month, you know, uh, walk to Playa Sosua and you can actually see the ocean. You can actually see the ocean from the window. Not a big ocean view, but enough to be able to say that you are just down the hill and a walk over to the beach. So now, um, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm not going to turn the camera around because I want to be private, but there's some familiar faces right there that all you la ladies and men would know. Okay, so the apartment is just away from the beach you can see the beach from the apartment great place just to live long term for 450 bucks a month in paradise he came and when he arrived he brought his girlfriend now I it doesn't matter to me who he's bringing um, he's a, an older gentleman retired and he wanted something long term and he brought his girlfriend who's a little younger and as soon as she got into the apartment she was like oh no air conditioning you know and i was like i felt cool with her i'm just like she is she's being real right she thought her man was going to put her up in a villa <laughs> she's like who this retired man is going to put me up in a villa you know type of attitude and then after that i told her no there's no air conditioning but I'm pretty sure that, you know, maybe we can do something about that. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to see. And then she's like, is there a pool? And I'm like, no, there's no pool here. Right now, I'm, I, I could have said to her, please, he's paying very inexpensive rent. Just be happy to be able to have a two bedroom, two bathroom close to the beach and sabato tu boca, you know, close your mouth. But I didn't. 
because I understand the woman in me understands that if there's a young woman, I was a young woman before. Come on, and I dated some older men. Hola, I dated some. <laughs> I dated some older men back in my day when I was younger, and. If a man's gonna take me to somewhere, I'm gonna want it to be great. Especially, I, I dated a lot of wealthy men back in my day. So if he's a wealthy man, he better show up something nice. It better be a nice hotel. It better be five star. I'm going with him. You know what I mean? Imagine me when I was like 20 years old and fit and fun. You know? Come on, I was fly. So I, if I'm hanging with an older dude, he better take me to the Marriott. That was my mentality. Nowadays, I understand those girls' mentalities because they're young girls, right? They're not investing their, their, their lives for um, ever to this man. It's just for now. And I think the men understand that as well, most of them. And I think this dude would understand that as well. I hope he would. He seems like a cool dude. Seemed like a cool dude and seems like a cool dude again. But there was a break of me thinking he's cool. And that was during the weekend. And I'll get to that. I told him I was going to make this video. So um, what happened was, you know, she showed up and she wasn't really happy with the apartment, whatever. And then they're like, no TV. There's no TV. And there was no TV. I sent him the video. He asked me the question. He said, is there a TV? Does he have to pay for electricity? Um, you know, all that stuff. And I got back to him and I said, no, there's no. Like, you're just paying for some raw deal holy field you are going to pay for um um you know I, I told him we can get a tv put in there maybe right and wi-fi and hot water when he initially rented it there was no hot water no wi-fi no tv he requested these things and i spoke to the landlord about it and she put in wi-fi and hot water before he even got here and he didn't have to pay another lick of a cent for that that was what she did above and beyond okay and that was very um i don't i just i can't i can't express how mature that was of her how smart that was of her and how beautiful it was of her to understand that foreigners love their hot water and wi-fi so we got that put in for him then once he was here you know he messages me and he's like there's no tv and I said, yes, you saw the video and you saw that. But don't worry. Let me speak to the landlord and see if she'll get a TV put in. So this is Saturday. He arrives Friday. So this is Saturday. The owner, the landlord, went to Santo Domingo on Saturday. He messages me. And I want all of you guys to keep this in mind, please. This is a developing country. Okay? It's not North America. It's not France. It's not Italy. It's not... And it, it's, 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 you may get a place where you're not going to have 24 hour electricity if the electricity goes out. And my apartment building, as beautiful as it is, I don't have 24 hour electricity. If I want 24 elect hour electricity, I can get myself what's called an inverser. And that will give me 24 hour electricity. But the electricity doesn't go out enough for me to invest in that device. And when the electricity does go out, I gratefully pull, up, pull open a book if it's the daytime. And if it's the nighttime, I go to sleep straight up. And the fan's not spinning, you know, and there's no air conditioner on. Yeah, I do sweat a little bit, but I just open up my doors, my glass doors. It's evening time and the breeze comes through, right? I have become accustomed to, hola, I have become accustomed to when there are when the electricity is out it's not like an electricity shortage at all it's usually just a quick fix and it might take about an hour and it happens like maybe i don't know once i don't know once a month like you know so it doesn't happen enough for me to be able to go and buy something to fix it Okay, with that being said, this guy does have that. I made sure that he has 24 electricity, 24 hour electricity. Most times if you get inexpensive apartments, you're not going to have that. So a lot of people are coming here for apartments for 350 bucks a month. For 350 bucks, you are not going to get 24 hour electricity. You might get hot water, 
you might. I went without hot water, but I even now to this day, I have hot water now, but I end my shower with cold water. Just because I love it. Like I don't want to get out of the shower with hot water and then just jump into the heat of like, you know, of outside the bathroom. I could have my air conditioner on everything and my hair will still get fuzzy and humid. So I end my shower and it's not cold water. It's not cold water. In Canada, we have hot and cold. When you turn off the hot, it goes cold, freezing. It's not like that here. The cold water in the shower is not freezing ever. It's room temperature. And it's quite nice, actually. It's quite nice. It's like if you shower, you know, before, ah, I got it. Before you go into the water, okay, like on the beach or at a pool, you know that shower that you shower to clean yourself off before you go into the water and when you get out of the water? That's what these showers feel like without... Hi. That's what these showers feel like um, when you don't have hot water. Okay, so on to more. And I don't want to make this guy seem like a monster. A lot of you guys are going to understand where he's coming from. And I understood where he was coming from too. He just didn't know. So he messages me. It's a Saturday. I'm at Pirates Bay right over here overlooking Sosua. You know, ordered myself a nice pizza. I'm chilling out, waiting for my buddy to show up, waiting for karaoke to start. And I get a message from him. And he's like, Oh, no, 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 no. I need to back up to the night before. The day before, he's like, there's no water. And I'm like, oh, there's no water? Oh, I don't know why. So I contacted the owner, and the owner's like, yes, there's water. But take the little light switch. Here to get hot water, you have to turn on a light switch. The light switch turns red. After about 10 minutes, you jump into the water, your shower, you take your shower, it's beautiful, it's hot, the tank is heated, you get out and you turn off the switch. That's it. Well, he had to do that with his water as well. So I contacted the owners and I said, hey, my client has no water. And they said, oh, okay, well, just tell him to turn on the switch. Now, this particular client chose to continue to work with me when he got here. Now, I don't do that. When I get you guys an apartment, I hand you over to the owner. And then you deal with the owner. I know the owner is good. I know the owner is awesome. The own, any owners that I work with, any landlords that I work with, they're amazing for the most part, most of them. Especially if they're Dominican. They're going to give you a good price and good service. Period. So, um, you know, I didn't, I, he chose to continue to work with me. And I didn't know he could speak Spanish. So I thought he's a little bit older. You know, I could tell that he wasn't really here that many times before. So he told me he was getting a pension and everything. So I wanted to look out for him. But then he got to me and he's like, there's no water. And I'm like, yo, okay, well, hold on a minute. So I contacted the owners. The owners contacted me. They told me to tell him to do that thing with the switch. He did it and he had water. But I also left him a message from the owner saying, make sure you turn, make sure you turn the switch off. He didn't listen to that. And he burned the water pump. Yes, he did. And they aren't even charging him. As far as I know right now, they're not charging him. They're not taking it out of his security deposit. The Dominican woman bought that pump all on her own. So they told me to tell him to turn it off. Hold on one second, guys. <laughs> so anyway, um, he left the water pump on and he burned the water pump. Um, that's not something that's common. I've never heard of that before. So I don't know. I'm not trying to make you guys paranoid. You don't have to do that here. If there is a switch in your bathroom that you have to turn on, turn it off when you take your shower. That's all. Like, just turn it off. Especially if you're told to do that from your landlord. Anyway, he didn't listen to me, and that was it. The next day, his water pump busted, and he didn't have any water. He messages me and he's like, hi, there's no water again. And I said, did you turn the switch on? And he said, I just left it on type of thing. And I'm like, okay. 
And he's like, and another thing. Hola. And another thing. Um, a neighbor told me that I always have to use water to wash and shower with and brush my teeth and I didn't sign up for this. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what your neighbor told you, but that's not true. You can shower normally. The p- person who like, is renting this place to you would never have you go buy all your water to shower in and brush your teeth in and all that other stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't listen to your neighbor. And he gets back to me and he's like, the neighbor, th- this guy told me that you're the owner of this place. So now I'm getting pissed, straight up. Excuse me if you have children around, sorry for swearing. But now I'm getting peeved, okay? Now I'm like, dude, first of all, I met you at the apartment and you didn't even show up at the right apartment and I gave you the Google pen. Shows up with a girlfriend that I didn't even know was coming, not that I need to know because it's none of my business or or the landlord's business or the owner's business, like none of our business at all. If you're paying your rent, it's a guest-friendly place. It's fine. But she grabs the phone and she's running her mouth off to me. I hung up on her. She's not my boss. Who's she? I hung up on her. And then I left him a voice note. And I said, listen, I'm doing business with you, not with your girlfriend. Your girlfriend has no right to speak to me in that manner at all. So, Chamel. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, <laughs> let's put a pin in that, as Jamaicans would say. Come here, look who we have here, guys. Mm. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Good, how are you? Great, oh great. Where's your peanut shoes? <laughs> I mean, your, your peanut socks, you don't got any, nah, look, nah, but nah, you're nah, still nah. looking fly. <laughs> look how fly this I'm brother okay. looks. I'm going okay. Oh, I thought you were high. <laughs> it, did you bring him down here yeah, with yeah, you? Okay. All the way from New York? No, or, the, or, or the, the, you're from Philly. We met, we met in Colombia. We met in Colombia. In met Colombia. Yeah. You were just there like a month ago. Yeah, yeah, or, I was there for five months. Oh, my name is Cerise. Come say hi on my live chair. What's your live? Oh, she's yeah. gonna lie. Okay. Saludos a todos. Mi nombre es Damaine. Vivo en Colombia. Conocimos allá en Colombia. Y ahora, desde cinco o seis años, aquí estoy en la República Dominicana. Y soy sua con Cerise. La Bella. <laughs> and in case you don't know, let me translate for you. Hello, everybody. This is Domain. We I met this cool guy in Medellin, Colombia. Yeah. This is my first time being back in the Republic, Dominican Republic in about five years. And here we are. Just come get something to eat at Flip Flop, and we see Miss Lovely Sharice. <laughs> you're, you're tuned into the right channel. You're tuned into the right channel. Wow, wow guys. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. So how was Colombia? Oh wait, hold on. He just, that was your first time in Colombia? Uh, second. Second. How was yeah. Colombia? I loved it. It was amazing. Yeah? I want to go back, but we got kicked out because we overstayed. Yeah, yeah. You only allowed six months in Colombia. How long you... were you in Colombia for? Uh, six months within a year. Being that I already went, it's this five months, it, it was over six months. So. So you were going to Colombia the whole time and cheating on us here in the Dominican Republic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was. I fell in love with you Colombia. You love it. Yeah. Aww. Aww, yes. that's Excellent. wonderful. And you go back and forth as well. Well, this year I had to be this year I had to because I didn't get a visa. So I said I'm gonna do the honest thing and leave this year and go back next year because previously I just overstayed my visa and got fined. Oh, how much yeah. is the fine? Well, my fine was only one hundred and sixty-five dollars. Mine was one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, how long did you overstay? Oh, let's see, oh, about a year or two. Who's counting? You lived there. <laughs> you lived, and then you left, and they find you, and now you can't go back. Well, I, when can I you can't go, go back? back until two thousand twenty-two. To, okay. Well, that's only a few months yeah, from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why you're here. Here, oh, he's a traitor, Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> he's only here because you told him he can't go back until next year. And you like Colombia? Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Where in Colombia were you? Medellin. Medellin. Yeah. I'm Why do you like it? But Medellin is everything is cheap. The food is cheaper. It's, it's, 
Yeah. Cheaper than here? Cheaper than here. Yes. Cheaper than here. You haven't here. been there yet? I haven't been there. <laughs> I don't know. Hello. Jo Canada. <laughs> I'm not going to Colombia. Why not? Not right now. If the, it, what's their vaccine stuff like there? Well, they get, everybody's getting the vaccine there. Right. Yeah. yeah um, it's not as bad as the U.S. Okay. No, so yeah, when no. the pandemic came, when the pandemic came, I told myself, listen, if it's going to end here, I'd rather be in Colombia than the U.S. <laughs> right? Colombia, yes. And, and that's true. So I, I, I agree with that. And I know a lot of people that rather be in the Caribbean and South America and everywhere else instead of here. I mean, instead of there, yeah. in America and Canada. So how long are you here for? I'm only here until next week. I'm leaving September 8th. Luis Abinadir. You can kick him out now. <laughs> I'm joking. This is this is Shamel. Guys, you remember him from Cabaretti. We did a live to air at Goddess Lounge and it was amazing. Yes. And you just he just messaged me a couple of days ago from Santo Domingo. Mm -hmm. What was it yesterday or the day before? day before? And you told me you might be coming. Yeah. Okay. So how long are you here again for? Sorry, in Sosua. In Sosua? Yeah, and then I go back to Santo Domingo for my flight. Oh, so you're in Sosua now for the duration of your trip? Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay, yes. and are you Tinder happy again? <laughs> swipe, swipe, swipe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh. Oh, he's just cool. chilling. Yeah, he's just chilling. But last time you were in Cabarete, now you chose yeah. to stay in Sosua. Yeah, yeah. And already, you've been here for one day. Uh, yeah, we got here yesterday. We stayed at Goddess last night, and then right. we, yeah, now we got an apartment here. Oh yeah, and how you liking it? We loving it. Our internet is not working, but other than that, I'm it's playing. good. <laughs> no wifi. No wifi. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call it here, wifi. <laughs> yeah, so. Aww. Well, thank you. Are you All guys right. doing now? You gonna be here for a minute? Yeah, we're gonna yeah, yeah, we about to go eat. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. All, All right. right, I'm just gonna finish up on my live. <laughs> If you guys have anything to say, come on and jump back on, please. Very nice meeting. What's your name again? Domain. Domain. Yes. So like Germain, but not D A M A I N. E. 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 Domain. For excelente. For excelente. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Domain. Nice to meet you as well. All right, you're welcome. <laughs> Wasn't that a lovely treat, guys? Wasn't that a lovely treat? Shamel, oh, you guys come here, hurry up. I find so many of you American friends, which I'm gonna get to in a second. I know this whole live to air is all about that, but I just wanna finish this story, kind of story time. So, you know, the guy's like, um, the guy's girlfriend says to me, she grabs the phone off him as I'm talking to him, by the way. And I, I'm just going to be real graphic. I was in, this was, let me give you the exact day. He arrived Thursday. No, he arrived Friday. I checked him in. I don't check you guys in. Anyone that rents apartments from me, you know, it's few and far between that I check in. Right? But I checked him in. Um, and then I went to Puerto Plata because I went there to a salon and then after my salon appointment, you know, you go to a salon, you feel so relaxed and refined and pristine, you know, pristine. And then all of a sudden I'm on my way to the washroom and he calls like, so I think it's an emergency. I guess kind of it was. He's like, I don't have any water like that. Like he's freaking out, but not too much. He's not. And I said, okay, don't worry. This happens sometimes. Let me contact the landlord. It's not like I ignored his call. It's not like I put him on hold. It's not like anything. I answered his call and I said, okay, let me call the landlord, his girlfriend. That's when his girlfriend interrupted and grabbed the phone. Fresh young thing talking to me about, we have no water. She's Dominican. We have no water. We have no water. Girl, please. I am Canadian and you are not talking to the right chick because I've done without water for nine days straight in one of the houses that I was at over here in Bate. You're not talking to the right person because I'm not going to feel any pity on anyone that's yelling at me that understands that situation more than I do. But then, of course, 
the young girl inside of me remembered me from back in the day and I want to be pampered too. She's a young girl. She's not going to, she's not with this gentleman in order for her to live in the same standards. She was hoping that he would put her up in a villa or somewhere with a pool, air conditioning, stuff like that. But he's coming here because he's on pension and he's looking to save money. The two of them are on two different pages. So I'm sure she probably yelled at him harder than she yelled at me. But when she yelled at me, I hung up the phone because I can and I did. And I'll do the same thing to anyone else that yells at me. And then I said to him in the phone, I'm repeating this just because I know I already said it. But I said to him in the phone, I said, listen, I am working with you. I got the apartment with you. You and I are doing the business. Do not put your girlfriend on the phone with me and have her speak to me like that. And they respected that. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. I, I actually thought she was gone the next day when he contacted me again. And then this time when he contacted me, he's like, there's no water again. But that's because he left the pump on and broke it. Okay. It had nothing to do with the landlord. But the landlord still bought the water pump and bought him a new TV too, which they went to go meet him today with, I think, for sure. So now, let's just talk about Saturday afternoon when I left my apartment I'm talking to him I went and I topped up on my data so I could still talk to him you know and make sure I'm in contact with him speaking about data guys is are you guys getting a good live feed here sorry there's a lot of messages there I'm going to go all the way down if you guys can let me know if you're getting a good live feed that would be great so then um, I nice top. You're welcome. Paradise life. <laughs> so um, right now we're at flip flops, and I would like to at least say, since I'm using this wonderful establishment as my live to air right now, you guys should come to flip flop, and you can get um, some good t-shirts and everything else. A little more. So now. Um, I'm I, I top up my cell phone. I come here to Bate from Los Chiramicos, and I'm sitting at Pirates Bay overlooking Sosua Bay. It is a beautiful restaurant, Italian restaurant, and I'm chilling. And I am enjoying life, waiting for karaoke to start. My friend Gustavo comes, Spanish teacher. We're going to have a pizza, and we're chilling. I'm speaking to a client on the phone from Canada, a life coaching client. very I'm very what someone wants to do a podcast I'm up for anything Cerise we need to get you a podcast you're very talented Philly Dom side dude Philly Dom side dude ooh that doesn't really sound cool and then triple double triple oh seven i don't know about that are you a hater for philly dom because i'm just let me know i'm gonna wait for a few more messages from you and then delete you let me know philly dom is another uh vlogger here guys you can check him out philly dom i think that represents philadelphia and dominican republic i'm only guessing so anyway here i am and I'm chilling out. He messages me again and he's like, Cerise, uh, <laughs> did you enjoy your wings? What did you have, wings? Yeah. Y yeah. <laughs> all right. See you later, TJ. He came all the way from the beach up here to flip flop to get the wings and he's on his way back down to the beach now. Tells you something about the wings here. They're delicious. Okay, so. Here I am, chilling out, and then he messages me again, and he's like, you know what? There's no water, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know at this time that he broke the pump. And I'm like, listen, I don't know what it could be. Did you turn the switch on again? He's like, yes, I did. I left the switch on. And I was like, well, you're not supposed to, right? And then he starts with, this is BS. This is BS. I have piss in my toilet and feces in my toilet. And I'm thinking, dude, you're talking to the wrong person because I know this landlord is amazing and she will fix you up 
perfectly when she can. So I said that to him. I'm like, listen, I understand you're upset. I went through that myself here. But you have to realize you are in a developing country and this might happen, but these landlords are not going to allow this to happen more than a day. Please give them a moment to respond to me. Right now, they don't have any internet. I didn't know they were in Santo Domingo at this time. He's the one that told me. And he's like, oh yeah, well, you know what? The tenant upstairs told me that this is your apartment. So you're in Santo Domingo type of thing. And I'm like, I'm not in Santo Domingo. I took a video of where I was, even showing his apartment building from where I was. And I'm like, there's your apartment building. I'm in El Bate. And this is where I'm at. And I show him the video of me just so he knows exactly where I am. And then um, he's like, well, the plumber told me too, that this is your apartment. And I'm like, I don't even know who the plumber is. I don't even know who you're talking to. The only thing I own here is me. That's it, and my dog. I don't even know what you're talking about. So now I'm just, I don't even want to deal with the dude any longer. And so I said to him, you know what? I'm not the owner. You have to stop listening to people, but now I'm sick of you. I didn't say it like that. I said, now I'm not, now I'm not even dealing with you because you're rude. So now I'm going to do what I always do with people. I'm going to hand you over to the owners because I have no problem handing you guys all over to the owners because I know the owners that I'm going to get places with you for you they love their place more than you do and they will treat their place better than you do they're not just trying to put you in some shack no they want to make sure that things are clean and looking good for you when you come here this woman did not have wi-fi in her apartment or hot water and she got a hot water tank put in and wi-fi for him because that's what he asked for before he came and he's only paying 450 dollars a month for a two bedroom two bathroom so let that sink in for a minute two bedroom two bathroom a walk to the beach okay it doesn't have a pool 450 bucks a month he didn't let that sink in i didn't mention money to him again because i didn't feel feel i had to but i did say to him i'm going to hand you over to the owners now and this woman is a beautiful christian woman do not talk to her the way you're speaking to me that's what i said to him you can you can you can amor que pasa <laughs> I'm going to buy some M&M's off this wonderful Dominican woman who sells stuff walking up and down the beach. Hold on one second. Amor, ven aquí. Ven. Here she is. Can I, can I, Joel Toma? Am I Joel Toma? This is what she sells. She sells cigarettes, cigars, lollipops, Pringles, chocolate, and gum. See? Totos? Okay, I'm going to buy right now a pack of M&M's. She knows I always love my M&M's. Oh, my gosh. Look at M&M peanuts. Oh! <laughs> tu sabes. E Trident Mint. Oh! <laughs> it's part of me. Gracias, Toma. Por favor, momento. Oh, English. <laughs> Two apples, English. Oh, poquito. Okay. Gracias, baby. So yeah, I got my fix for tonight when I get home and I watch my YouTube videos tonight. I'm watching YouTube videos on um, Tahiti, like the Fiji Islands, and Hawaii, Polynesians. Why did the people from Fiji Islands, Tahiti, go to Hawaii. It's the same group of people. That's what I'm interested in. Thank you, Jack, today for giving me some videos to watch when I get home. And also thank you for this topic for the video today, which I'm going to get back to in a second when I'm done this story time. So 
then um, you know I contact the owners I'm in contact with the owners the whole time and I'm sending the owners his messages and I'm sending the owners messages to him this guy still thinks I was the owner of the apartment like why would I be lying about my own apartment if that's my apartment I'm not gonna lie about it so that told me that he thought I was dishonest and being deceitful so already he was already working against himself and so I'm just like, dude, I don't even want to talk to you any longer. You're listening to people about some other crap and it has nothing to do with me. So guess what? I'm handing you over to the owners now. They're going to take over from here. And the guy can speak Spanish, by the way. So he's like, oh, okay. So before I gave him the owner's phone number because he was just acting irate and out of control, in my opinion, he wasn't understanding. And I told him this is you know, a developing country, be a little patient. Maybe there's something up with the water. The owners will fix it. They're not going to leave you high and dry. Just give it a couple of more hours. We will have answers, please. And then I told him, please don't talk to this woman the way you're speaking to me. He gets back to me instead of saying, you know what, Cerise, I'm going to try to be patient. You're right. You know, I, I trust that you put me in good hands. Instead of saying that, he says, I've been, I lived in Belize. And I traveled the world. I, 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 that doesn't mean anything to me. So I got back to him after his little pissy fit. And I said, I don't care where you've been. I wouldn't even compare Toronto to Montreal. And they are bordering neighbors. That's like comparing Toronto to New York. You can't compare Belize to the Dominican Republic. And he's like, I've been to third world countries. And I'm like, and this is not a third world country. It's a developing country. And there's going to, go, there's going to be things that go a little off with the electricity. And also with, you know, um, like the water and stuff like that. There's going to be things that happen. But it doesn't happen often enough. And it just so happened that it happened on that one day when he's here. And it just so happened to happen on a weekend. And I know that when weekends happen here and something happens, things take a little longer on a Saturday to fix, on a Sunday to fix. It does, but it still gets fixed usually on that same day. Okay, so don't think that you're going to be left. I was left in a house that I stayed in. And that was just because they, I, I, I needed to go through that in order for me to, in order for me to understand everything that I understand right now and be able to do real estate and be able to get apartments and be able to notice a smell when I go into an apartment that wait, no, that's the plumbing or no, wait, that's mildew or mold, I should say, you know, I know now. And, and that was just a part, that was just part and I guess part and parcel of what I needed to understand for my business and my services that I provide to you guys. So now I didn't give him the number for the owners yet, but I gave the owners his number. And I said, listen, I'm giving you his number. He's not a very nice man. He's very impatient right now. So when you contact him, um, he might be a little pissy. And then I also sent them all his messages so they can see his aggressiveness and anger and they were like okay don't worry don't worry you know and they were in Santo Domingo and so then he contacts me again and then he's like you still didn't send me the numbers of the owners and I'm like I'm sorry I apologize I sent them your your number and they will contact you but here you go here's their number and don't you talk to them the way you're talking to me you have respect for these Dominicans. They are Dominican women, and they are good women. They're Christian women, and they deserve respect. Do not talk to them the way you're talking to me. That's what I said to him. And you know what he got back to me and said? Don't give me a lecture. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. So I just let it all fly, and I let them all talk together. He figured out now that it was not me. It's not my apartment. And I told him I was only in that apartment twice, like once to video it and once to wait for him to take it over, you know, and it's just a brand new apartment that the aunt took over the aunt. When I say the aunt, the, 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 the nieces are the people who I know, but the aunt owns a call model in front of my apartment. So I know she's not deceitful or dirty. She's a good Christian woman, you know, and um, so in any case, I just asked him to be more patient. 
eventually by the end of the night they worked it all out and they did get him a tv um i think they went today to take it to him i'm not sure but they are all meeting up today and he apologized to me yesterday so i said to him okay you know i'm glad that you understand like he's in good hands you know i wanted him to know don't burn bridges with these people these women are amazing and they have good connections and they own so much in Los Chetamicos. Their whole family is Los Chetamicos. And it is an amazing place to be. And he does not want to burn that bridge, especially with women. Because women makes everything go around here. You know, women make everything go around here. Mm. That was it. I don't think his girlfriend is from here. She's Dominican. But I don't think she's from Sosua or Puerto Plata. I think she's from Santo Domingo or Santiago. Something like that. But she was a lot younger than him. She was a lot younger than me. And I'm a lot younger than him. So I think maybe he was stressing her out a little bit. She was stressing him out a little bit. And she was probably saying, no water, no TV, blah, 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 blah. Wait a moment. And that's a lot of the things if you guys want to get inexpensive rent there may be some kinks that you have to work out and there's nothing wrong with that at all all right that's that story now he's happy and it only took one day for him to be happy and for him to figure out that him having no water the next day was his own fault he left the pump on when i told him to turn it off and the, the i forwarded him what the owner said turn off the pump and he didn't listen. He burnt the circuit. And so I am thinking to myself that that is the fault of himself. And he needs to pay for that out of his, his deposit, his security deposit. Because he was told to turn it off and he chose to keep it on. That's the fault of the tenant. But guess what? The landlord's not charging him for that. She sh she's incurring that cost out of her own pocket. I wonder how bad he feels right now, and especially if he's going to watch this video. He's probably thinking, yeah, you know what, Cerise? Yeah, because he even said to me on one of the messages, he's like, oh, you just hide behind your keyboard. No, you just hide behind your voice notes. Hiding behind my voice notes? What are you talking about, brah? I am talking to you constantly. From the moment you arrived in at the airport, I told him, contact me when you're at the airport, and I'm going to go wait for you at the apartment. I changed my entire morning over for this man. And on top of that, he wasn't even going to pay me my $50 finder's fee. I had to, I didn't ask him for it. I just, he said to me, do you have Cash App? And I said, no, I don't have Cash App, but I have PayPal. And then he got back to me. This was before he arrived. He got back to me and he's like, okay, because I want to pay my rent through that. And I'm like, you can't pay your rent through PayPal. PayPal takes a cut. Plus, that's my personal PayPal. That's not my apartment. And I thought you were just asking me for that because I thought you were going to send me my finder's fee. <laughs> and he's like, oh, right. And he's like, I'll take care of that when I get there. And I'm like, okay. And he did take care of it. You know, he did take care of it. And if he didn't, that's fine too. Because you know why? The owner um, is the one that wins. The Dominican woman is the one that wins. She got herself a tenant. And you know what? He's not going to be a bad tenant. After all of this that I said, He's not going to take bad care of her apartment, even though he left that switch on and that was irresponsible. Um, it's not in every apartment here. It's the first time I have ever heard about that. I know about the heat switch, guys. I'm, talk I'm not talking about the hot water switch. I'm talking about another switch. So maybe the landlord will fix that as time goes on and she has more tenants in there and stuff. And if he decides to say stay six months, he's smart because he's not going to get another two bedroom, two bathroom by Playa Sosua for 450 bucks a month at all. Um, I have another one coming up in January at that price. So, you know. If you want it for January, you let me know right now and I can hold it for you long term, 450 bucks a month. And it's not two bedroom, two bathroom. It's one bedroom, one bathroom, but in the same building. Um, okay, so now another horror story of renters. There was, and, and this is just about deposits. There was a woman that contacted me and I met her the same time I met Shamel that just was just here, Shamel. And we were in Cabrete. 
I was living in Cabarete at the time, and she was living in Cabarete at the time, and so was Shamel. All and I got Shamel an apartment last time when he was here. All of us were chilling hard. We were all like, you know, enjoying life, having fun, and everything like that. She left, and then when she left, she came back. Hola, she came back. Um, and when she was coming back, she asked me for an apartment. Now, when she was here prior to that, I wasn't able to get her an apartment, but she had a really tough time and she kept complaining to me about each landlord. Oh, this landlord charged that. This landlord charged this. And the, um, the electricity was this and that. And she had a lot of complaints that really did not make sense to me because the electricity really should not be that much here. And hers was 60 bucks for the month. And I was like, 60 bucks for the month? What did you do? Leave the air conditioner on when you went out to, like, did, was the air conditioner on 24-7 for, your, for it to be, like, 60 bucks a month? Well, if you leave the air conditioner on 24-7, it could probably go up to 200 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month, whatever. But depending on where you are, because it goes by the kilowatts. If you're in the countryside, if you're in Sabaneta or something, the kilowatts per, um, the, 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 the pesos per kilowatt is cheaper. But here in Sosua and also some parts of Cabarete where there's a higher concentration of people and a higher concentration of tourists, just makes sense, even downtown Toronto, the electricity is a little bit more. That's not to make you afraid because it's not going to be anything compared to what you pay where you're from. And if it is, you might want to take that up with your landlord who you're renting from. Some of my landlords will even allow you to pay an extra 50 bucks a month and and on and then you just get your free electricity all month long okay so this girl she contacts me and she's like Cerise I'm coming back to the Dominican Republic and I only want to pay like you know 400 a month for rent no 350 and I'm like I have a place but it's 400 in my building and she was like okay I'll take it for a month she said, see if you can get it cheaper for me and I'm like, but you have to pay your own electricity. Like, you know that, right? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. So when you come here, you have to pay a deposit, a, a deposit, deposit. Okay. And that is the equivalent, usually, when you work with me, especially if the apartments are cheaper. Um, if the apartment's like a thousand, two thousand, or something that you're not going to have to pay a thousand dollar deposit. But usually, if the apartment is 450, then you will pay like 350 for your security deposit. It's like first and last, but you get that back when you're leaving. So, and there's no problem with my landlords, they will give it back to you. Okay, so now what happened was she says to me she's looking for an apartment, and I said to her, Oh, come on in my building. And I really was looking forward to her coming and chilling out in my building with me. At the time, Ken, you know, my buddy Ken, he was living in front of my apartment. And I put her upstairs, Wi-Fi, um, everything, right? So now she arrives. I told her, because she said she had suitcases, I said, I'm going to get my friend Gustavo to meet you at the bus stop. She came on a bus. I'm going to get my friend Gustavo to meet you at the bus stop. When he meets you at the bus stop, give him like, you know, 500 pesos for his pocket because he's going to bring you here to the apartment and she's like okay whatever now when he did arrive to get her she didn't even have her own ticket to get her own luggage off the bus she lost her ticket now the end of the road the end of the ride on Caribbean tours is Los Chiramicos Sosua if you get off at Porta Plata, you're getting, and you want to come to Sosua, you're getting off a stop at least 25 minutes early. Don't get off in Porta Plata just because Sosua is in Porta Plata. That is Sosu, the, the Porta Plata depot, bus depot place, is not the last stop. You want to come to Sosua, you got to get off at Los Chiramicos. She's so fortunate that she was coming to Los Chiramicos because if she was getting off in Puerto Plata or any place before that, there's no way she would have been able to get her luggage until the next day and she would have had to show her ID. So she gets off here at the last stop and Gustavo is there. She has like zilch Spanish, maybe hola and a few things 
more than that. She would not have been able to stick up for herself to ask this bus driver for her luggage. Imagine coach services, like nice bus services, right? They're not just going to be like, oh, you don't have your ticket? Okay, you can go. Because if, let's say she got off in Santiago, right? How many more stops are there from Santiago to Sosua? She could have taken someone else's luggage. Caribbe Tours is not going to allow that to happen. They need to see a legal ticket that you purchased and that you have. Bye, guys. Bye. So she didn't have that ticket. But Gustavo helped her. And that should have been payment alone. That was worth the 10 bucks alone. But he had to tell the bus driver, this is her luggage. Please just give it to her. Welcome to Flip Flop. So now, you know, it didn't go on like that. She didn't have to argue for her luggage too much. Gustavo got her luggage for her. And then when by the time he got back to my apartment with her, I had a whole barbecue ready for her. And I invited over so many people. I invited over Tyson. I invited over Mr. T. I invited over Ken. I invited uh, more people, Elsa, and more people. I had a big barbecue for her coming. For her, only for her. And then she arrives, and she didn't give me the deposit for the apartment or the rent. Okay, I wasn't going to, like, nail her down and be like, okay, give me the rent. I didn't. But when she did arrive, I took her upstairs to her apartment. I let her put in her stuff, and I said, come on down stairs when you change your top or whatever into my apartment we're gonna be ready for you she came down and then she's like why do i need to pay gustavo 500 pesos i could have came here on my own and i looked at her and i was like really she's like yeah i'm like okay i'll pay him for you and i did i paid him for her i gave i i gave him a thousand pesos Number one, because I looked at him, she was upstairs, she went back upstairs, and he was sitting on my couch, and I looked at him, and I'm like, Gustavo, how come you look disheveled? Like, how come you look like you're not in your right mind? You look like you're uncomfortable, you're sweating, you look upset. And he's like, that girl. And he's like, starts wiping himself, and he's like, that girl. It's him, myself, and Ken in my living room. I'm like, what? And he's like, that girl, she's like, just nasty behavior. I don't understand why she was so mean. And I said, she was mean to you? And he said, yes. And I said, how? And he said, well, she was just pushy and ungrateful. Like, what's 10 bucks to pick someone up at, an, at, at, at like a bus depot and make sure they get somewhere safely? And I was like, you know what, you're right. So I said to him, okay, well, just sit and chill and have a bite to eat, you know, everything's cooking. Oh, it wasn't a barbecue, or was it? Yes. Anyway, I cooked. And then he's like, no, I don't want to stay. I don't want to stay. Not if this girl's here. And that's the first time he ever did that. He can deal with some gringos and gringas. But he wanted to go and he didn't want to have any part to do with her. So, of course, I'm going to say something to her. She came back downstairs. She's sitting in my living room. And um, there was only her, myself, and Ken at the time. And I said to her, you know, 500 pesos is not a lot of money to give someone that has your back. You know, and she's like, well, I don't know why I have to give it to him anyway. And I said, don't worry, I got it. And that was pretty much it. Now, fast forward to the end of the night. We're chilling out the end of the night. Everyone's gone. And then Ken walks Tyson down to the front door. And, you know, there's just her and I in the apartment alone. And she was about to go upstairs and go to sleep. So, of course, I have to get the rent, right? She's going to be here for a month. So I said to her, okay, sweetheart, you know what? Um, give me the deposit so I can at least have the deposit and the rent. She looked at me and she's like, deposit? And I'm like, well, yeah, a deposit. And she's like, well, I, you didn't tell me about a deposit. And she's been here before. She knows that that's how I do stuff. Most of you guys know that too, that rent from me. You have to give a little bit of a deposit. And so I said to her, well... Okay, then forget it. If I didn't tell you about the, de about the deposit, you already know about the deposit. But if you are tight on money right now, then I know you. You're, you're, and I never did this before. Ever, ever, ever here as I was doing business. I do not mix business with pleasure. And at this moment, God was showing me, don't ever do it again. So then I said to her, okay, you know what? I'll vouch for you. You know? And if she allowed that 
air conditioner to run 24-7, I would have had to pay that at the end of the month, not the landlord. You know what I mean? So I looked at her and I'm like, okay, don't worry about the deposit. Just give me the rent. She went off. Well, I didn't know about a deposit and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, whoa. Like, just relax. That's it. Like, just pay your rent for the first month. Like, her stuff is already upstairs. We already spent a whole night chilling and everything. Ken comes back upstairs and she decides to get all wrong and strong. Strong and wrong with them. Well, just with the situation and she looks at Ken as soon as he comes in the apartment and she's like she didn't tell me about a deposit and I'm like okay well all right you already know about deposits and if I didn't tell you I know I told her but I said if I didn't tell you about the deposit then that's okay just pay the rent she kept going on about this deposit and just getting very very negative and then Hold on one second. I'm seeing some green and some yellow here. Jackie in cloud 60. Thank you. Ah, thank you, you guys, for the contribution. That's amazing. You guys know whatever you guys contribute to me, I always pay it forward. So, yeah, she's like fighting and blah, 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 blah. And that was it. And then, you know, Ken tried to be the mediator. He really did. But then I was like, yo. And the hood just came out. Like, I was like, listen to me. You are so wrong right now. Because I got the rent down to 350 The original rent was 500 a month. So for those of you that think I get a huge kickback from the apartments that I rent, not always at all. No, never at all. <laughs> because I want the landlords to rent out their places. And if it's too expensive, I will lose a client for them. And not only that, I'm the queen of bargains, you know. And so anyway, um, I got her rent down to 350 to the point where I felt bad because Ken was renting a smaller apartment in front of my apartment in the same building for 450 a month. And I got it taken right down to 350 due to her being there for 350 because I felt that he deserved the same cheap rent. So I also advocated for him to get cheap rent. And sorry, Ken, for talking about how much your rent was here. It's nobody else's business, but I'm just trying to use this as a story in order to show you guys how good the Dominican landlords are here and how much they do try to work with you. So then she's, she just couldn't shut her mouth. She just couldn't sabattle her boca you know um so i told her i was like you know what just go upstairs go to sleep and that's it and then she went upstairs and then ken came back down and ken came back down and ken said you know what she's gonna leave and i said what she's gonna leave where is she gonna find a beautiful apartment like this in Sosua, modern just by the beach three minute walk and then I became concerned. And he's like, I don't know, Miss Cerise. That's what he calls me. I don't know, Miss Cerise, but she wants to go. And sometimes you just got to let people hang themselves. And I was like, well, tell her she gets tonight free. And if she can't find a place tomorrow, tell her she can have tomorrow free too. Now, it's not free because I still have to pay that for her. But I knew that I could just work that out with the landlord somehow and let the landlord know that there's a lot going on what's this right here hold on more green guys cammy thank you so much oh thank you guys thank you thank you i pay it all forward and those of you who've been chilling with me at certain times you know that's true so then anyway i said to him you know what just tell her she can stay here tonight no problem tell her to rest her head tomorrow she can stay too we'll work it out he went upstairs and he told her this of course she has to still be wrong and strong and what does this girl do bangs on my door five o'clock in the morning now we all had a bunch of you know chilling the night before she went upstairs at like 10 30 at night or something because this is all during like the world stuff too this is only like in january 
So, um, you know, there was curfews. Everyone had to leave my place by 10 o'clock anyway, right? Because of the curfew. Mm. So she's like, knocks on my door five o'clock in the morning. I wasn't about to answer it. And I'll be honest with you. I was scared. This woman that's bigger than me could have just, I don't know, she's wrong and strong and angry five o'clock in the morning, banging on my door wasn't even normal so I didn't answer it I just rolled over and went right back to sleep then she came back down and she knocked on my door seven o'clock in the morning and we're not talking about just knock 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 it was bang 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 and there were four apart there are four apartments in my building I'm in one Ken's in one she's in one and the other ones were upstairs by her so I knew they weren't being disturbed so I was like this girl's just gonna have to sit back and shut up so I contacted Ken and I called him and I called him and I called him and he answered and he's like what's up and I'm like that girl's at my door right now and she's banging can you open up your door and tell her to stop and ask her what she wants because I'm a little scared and I don't need her coming in and busting in my house and killing me in the middle of the night, in the middle of the morning. And then he right away opened up his door and he said to her, what do you want? And she's like, oh, I want to give Cerise the keys. And he grabbed the keys from her and he closed his door and he messaged me back and he's like, I got the keys. She banged on my door again. And then um, at this point, I called my motor concho. Right, and I asked my motor control to come into the building so he could come up the stairs and I could come out my door at the same time. If anything happened, he would witness anything, you know what I mean? That's not what I signed up for. This is a woman that I thought I was going to have her back for life. Anytime she comes here, I'm going to set her up nicely in a really nice apartment and make sure that she's good. So Ken said to me, you know, Miss Cerise, she probably didn't have the deposit and she took it personally and she probably felt bad. And I'm like, if she felt bad and she didn't have the deposit, a big woman would say they don't have it. And a big woman would know that I'd be like, don't worry about it, especially after I already told her, don't worry about it. Just give the rent because the rent needs to be paid. Gracias, amor. So then, see, sí, gracias. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Hola. So that was it, you know, and now all of a sudden my motor concha comes. So now I'm big and bad. <laughs> I won't lie. He gave me some energy and some courage. And I opened the door and I said to her, what do you want? Get out. Go. Just go. I told you, I told Ken to tell you, you can stay two days and you choose to bang on my door at this time. Get out. And then she's like, I'm talking to my mother on the phone. And she was talking to her. This is like a full grown woman. She's like almost my age. I'm 49. So I think she's like 41 or something. And she's like, I'm talking to my mother on the phone. And I said, good, because your mother knows what type of woman she raised. And your mother knows what I'm saying right now. Because I yelled loud enough in the background. Not yelled to wake up the neighbor upstairs. But I said it loud enough, powerful enough to be able to say, good, go probably like this in this tone right now and I said good go your mother knows what type of woman she raised because we all know what type of children we raised and um, she just was like I'm gonna go now I'm waiting for my taxi and I said good go I only saw her one more time after that on the beach and I didn't even see her my friend Ken did we were walking and my Ken's like look look there she is and we were on Playa Sosua and I saw her on Playa Sosua and I will admit to you I wanted to say hi to her. I like the girl. Her and I had some really good cry sessions when I lived in Quebrete the first time I met her, right? Um, at the time, I was going through some issues with my ex, Joelle. Remember that whole little sanky panky situation I was going through? And she was talking to me about her son and her situation that was pretty bad and, you know, not so cool and her ex and everything. And we cried together on the beach. I never did that with any woman before, you know, we were watching, we were, I'll never forget that moment. It was really special for me. And even though we went through what we went through here in Sosua, 
um, I still won't forget how special that moment was with her. You know, if she ever contacts me and she apologizes for what she did, I will forgive that girl in a heartbeat because I know she's not evil. There was something going through her brain that day and I don't, don't know what it was. But that was like the two people that I've ever had difficult times with here. The recent one that I just told you about with this dude and he apologized to me yesterday. Now, when he apologized to me, I was on the verge of like being like, oh, thank you for apologizing. Thank you so much. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And but then I was like, no, Cerise, this man was mean to you. This man didn't even care. Like he didn't even try to take your advice. All he wanted to do was just slam you down and shut you up and not even be understanding that he's paying very inexpensive rent in a developing country. And there's gonna be a lot of things that are gonna happen. And it just so happened it hit him as soon as he got here. He didn't watch all my videos clearly and he didn't do enough research. And he didn't realize that I hooked him up with the mo one of the most amazing families in Los Chiramicos. And that is an asset. Anyone I hook you up with here is an asset, not only to your short-term stay, but magnificent to your long-term stay. Anybody that God has put in my path here, and I put them in your path, you better believe they're going to be real Dominicano, authentico, like, or authentica one or the other. Authentic Cuba. When I was in Cuba, I had a cup that I got before and it said Authentica Cuba. I don't know if it's Authentica Dominicana. Anyway, it, it, that's just me going off in my own head right now with my Spanish that I'm not really well versed on, but that's okay. Authentic Dominican is anyone that I'm going to introduce you to and they are going to have your back. I'm not going to introduce you to Sankey Pankies or Chapiadoras. Those are young people. Chapiadoras are very young girls. Sankey Pankies are very young boys. I'm not interested in, in, in introducing them to you. You will find them yourself on the beach, period. I have people that are business owners, people that are, you know, working. They're my age and older. You know, I'm 49. They're my age and older. They're 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 restaurant owners. They are, um, you know, the, the Airbnb owners. And we want to make your vacation here amazing. Or they're they're working like in a place like this, like Flip Flop. You meet these girls in Flip Flop, and they are a okay, upstanding. I do got to take this moment to say Gregory does a really good job at hiring his staff. Amazing job. I just saw something yellow come in. And at the same time, my battery said it's low. So I just want to say to you guys right now, stay hungry. Oh, stay hungry. 100. Hello. Talk that talk. Oh, thank you. Lorraine, real brother. Also, um, then she should have come guys i'm gonna miss these comments the reason why i just want to say i love you first of all thank you so much for your comments but the reason why is because my battery is going low right now how much are the m m's ramona said <laughs> oh there's <laughs> the m m's are um 70 pesos i know it's a little expensive a dollar 40. i don't know how much they are in america but they probably would be like $1.25 in Canada. I don't know how much they are in Canada now. I don't know how much anything is in Canada now after being here for three plus years. But um, I don't mind paying 70 pesos for a bag of M&Ms. I love them cold. I love chocolate. I put those bad boys in the freezer when I get home. Leave them in there for like a... About 10, 15 minutes, they get cold. Mwah. They're good. I sit and I watch YouTube. <laughs> Today I'm going to be watching why the Fijians or people from Tahiti left and went to Hawaii. That's what I'm going to be learning today. But I just wanted to say, you know, like, I mean, obviously the, the video that I have, the title that I have kind of got dismantled because it's different around the world but i do have to tell you when i see the brothers come here the men come here from america 
and they're walking down the streets and they see other Americans, they're always like, hey, brother, hey, brother, hey. It's always like brotherhood. And I just thought it was like that in America because I'm not American, I'm Canadian. And in Canada, um, I don't know if it's really like that at all. I know my son always says hi to everybody because I do. And no matter what part of the world I go to. And so when we get into an elevator, we always acknowledge the other person. My son's like that and so is my daughter. That's exactly how I raise my children. My sisters are like that. I was raised like that. And that's why I do that. You walk into the elevator, someone else is in there, you acknowledge them. Hello, good day. You might not say, hey, how you doing today? Yeah, you're on your way to work and how was yesterday? No, not all that. But you just walk in, you say, hi, hola, you know, that's all. You'd be friendly. And um, so I heard here from a few guys, they're like, they love it here because they can be walking down the street and they see a group of brothers and the guys are like, hey, how you doing? Where are you going tonight? You going to r and Are you going to go here? Are you going to go there? What's going on tonight? And everyone connects. Before you know it, they're all renting a car or there's someone that already rented a car and they're all heading out to Puerto Plata or they're all taking a road trip to Boca Chica or they're going to, you know, Santiago to do whatever. Like the guys all are living their best life here. And I had no clue that sometimes in America, it's not the same because I don't go to America like when I was in Canada very often at all. It says, low battery you guys know how i do it i just let my phone run till it's dead <laughs> and i apologize about that to some of you guys that don't like that but i will say goodbye to you now but i'm just gonna let my battery run out so allow me to give you my hello i mean my goodbye right now but i'm gonna continue going mm. so oh my drinking a lot of you guys are curious about it i know so um, I went to one meeting since I stopped drinking and I didn't make it to a few of the other meetings. Um, I was just busy. I tried to go to one and I was there too early and I didn't realize if I was at the right spot or not. So I ended up going back home and chilling. But I did notice that um, it does strengthen a person when they go to the AA meetings. And then um, I've been cool after that. You know, I had one drunk night. Well, one in like one night where I drank more than what I would like to, but I wasn't like drunked up or anything like that. But I was here, right here at Flip Flop. And I was talking to a few people, a few gentlemen, like American men come in here all the time, rolling through and you guys always say hi to me. So hello to everyone that I met today amazing people that have come in every single time I'm here. I just want to say hello and I love you so much. And um, there's also James and also Melvin that I met. So today here alone, I met uh, Jack, Cardi, James and Melvin. And I just want to say hi to all you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching my channel and those of you who will be coming here let me know i'm here i'm gonna try to get you the best spot possible Th this other guy he's paying 450 a month my first story time about that and guess what he he got that for 450 without wi-fi without hot water without a tv but the landlord put it in for him at no cost no cost and he also broke the water pump which means that's a whole other cost. So the landlords are awesome. I'm only so thrilled when you guys contact me for help on apartments. Welcome you know, to Welcome to Flip Flop. Did you know the president was on these steps? Louis Abinader. Um, so yeah, I just want to say, you know, it's an amazing place when you can come to a country and you can be here with the people and learn from the people and the people here are very polite when they walk into a restaurant okay i might have walked into elevators in canada and been like hello it's a confined kind of environment in an elevator you obviously walk in and you go you can nod you can do whatever you want people in the dominican republic when they walk into a restaurant they say hello 
They say, hola, buen dia, buen dia, buen dia, buen dia. Or they just walk straight through and they say, hola, buenos dias. And they'll go on the order. But they always say something when they enter an establishment. And I've learned that here. And I'm like, wow, like, it's amazing here. So I just want to say to you guys, if you are single and you are a man and you just want to come here and enjoy your life, you can definitely do that. You will meet people from all different walks of life, people from all different ages, men and women. And it's an amazing feeling, you know, um, I can't wait for, you know, my son and daughter to come. They still haven't been here. But of course, with the world the way it is right now, it only makes sense. And um, it just makes sense. I understand. But it will get to a place and time where they will be able to come very easily and visit me. And we are all patient. But because this place is so beautiful and so welcoming, I'm not missing anyone back home in